So this week, um, I managed to co-opt Ben into presenting, um, and he's going to take it away very shortly, but it's a practical demonstration of the workflows chapter. This is sort of what I hooked him on. So take it away, Ben. All right, and forewarning, I, uh, I've been a bad student. I installed tidy models today. <laughs> so I'll, I'll share my screen and let's get started. OK, also, I'm using light mode for those that, that care. Um, maybe I can also wait. OK, so essentially, I have the Spotify data. Um, if I use scammer on this, then OK, just real fast, by the way. Um, is anyone having, is the screen font size big enough? Yeah, it's font size good. Um, size I think good. Okay. actually like for all the dark mode jokes we make, um, I think Tyler has a eye issue that like actually works better with dark mode. Like, so, mentioned that before. so if you can, if you I can don't switch. mind. Yes, I can. Great. Thank you. Appearance and then which one do you guys prefer? Uh, Cobalt, I think, is everyone's favorite. Okay. I'm going to start a debate if you don't pick Cobalt. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you don't pick Cobalt, people will start, like, complaining. Or... Yeah, so this is uh, Spotify data. Some of the things that we'll investigate are going to be acousticness, danceability, uh, duration, energy, li liveness, loudness. And we're going to use all those variables to try to predict the popularity of a song. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just for pre-processing, um, before getting into the um, workflows template, essentially I added a, a column to detect whether it, there is a remix. And so that's going to be another one of our variables. And then just dropping or omitting all distinct rows and dropping NA column or NA rows. Are you doing that? Like, why why remix specifically? Is that like a. Is um, that because you think just, that it would have a different like, being popular somewhere? There just wasn't too much to do, like for pre processing. So I wanted to add something else. <laughs> And I feel like it could make a difference, you know. Are remixes more popular or are they less popular? Just something interesting to ask. And there are significantly less, only about 2,000 compared to 170,000, not remixes. OK. So then we go into fitting. We set a seed and then split our data within the recommended 80-20 test split. And then we define our formula and then enter it here. Um, does anyone have any, like is it, do you know if it's better to define the formula before and then put it in or is that essentially the same thing? I think it's personal preference. I don't, okay. I don't know if there's a best practice I, I think the, the the point of workflows, though, as well, is like, hey, you can start off with the formula, but then mm -hmm. that workflow allows you to update it. Like, oh, hey, I thought of new features to add after model fitting or something. So it's kind of like, yeah, uh, just kind of what meets your needs in that case. Okay. So I could go back and then use the workflow to, let's say, drop. Uh, tempo, right. For instance. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. like okay. up, update formula or whatever the, okay. the function is. Yeah, let's let's try that out later. Um, so essentially, we don't really do anything with the data. Just or well, define the formula, create the recipe, and then define the model. We're just going to start out with a linear regression. We can do some other types of models later. <laughs> and then set engine to linear regression. Um, 
I actually was trying to do a, a log transform on a couple of these variables, but I was getting a couple errors. Um, I think there were some NA values induced. So we can define our, our workflow with this workflow function. And then we add the model that we defined and add our recipe, the Spotify recipe. Uh, fit our model. And then just to take a peek at the output, we take a look at the top 10 uh, most popular predicted songs. And I'm going to pop that out. So in this, um, for the, the, the split, our test data that we saw here, we have a couple songs that are predicted highly and then that are not that popular. And also the, the range is kind of weird. It's, it's our prediction is um, a little bit less than the maximum value of the most popular songs. And then we just check a plot and that's pretty much all I have for now. Um, so are you, gonna, are you ready to deploy this model into production? That was a Absolutely joke. not. No. <laughs> uh, not really. Uh, to, essentially we've done no real transformation on the variables, no checking for normality, um, things of that nature. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so like this, like you kind of work through like set using tidy models, I guess. Um, yeah, I did. And a little bit about the workflows. So what parts do you think like should happen before the models fit and after? Because I know there's like a diagram about like how to how to visualize it. So just like in talking about this like Spotify workflow that you've kind of set up, you know, which parts belong to the part like before the models fit, I guess. And like, you know, what more like you, I think, like you mentioned, like trying to use step log. So I was wondering, like, where did you try to do that? And should that be part of like pre-processing or post-processing, um, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess the answer is that I'm not entirely sure which would be better to, to do beforehand. Um, because you can definitely wrap all of this, the pre-processing stuff with log transforms in the Spotify uh, early on in this in this mutate, um, but if you do it in the um, within the like workflow framework or within the recipe, um, then you can update that later without changing the original data. So um, I guess it dep depends on how confident you are in the methods that you're using and how confident you are in the, if you needed to update your transform or try a different transform, it might be better to um, update that in your step log. I think, I think you hinted at something that's kind of the, the selling point of, of workflows, right? Like I was hesitant to transform my data in a recipe because I could just do it beforehand. I'm, you know, I'm good at the tidyverse. I can do a mutate on its own versus using like a step mutate inside a recipe. And so I'm just kind of wondering, you know, Ben or, or anybody else who, who uses this package, you know, what's what advantages have you found to doing all of your work in a recipe versus uh, breaking it out beforehand. Uh, 
I would say I'm a big fan of recipes. I don't know if you saw my post about it today. Um, I'm sorry, my mic was kind of far from my face, but the reason, the what I like about it is if you have to do the same transformation more than once, um, for example, on training data and then later on the actual data you're trying to use to predict, it does everything exactly the same and um, is pretty good at telling you when it can't and why it can't. So if something's weird about your data, it, it probably is going to be more verbose about that than a pipeline you set up yourself. Um, and it's just, especially with the workflows, it just, to like, to use the model, it'll do the prepping of the data and then apply the, the model and do the prediction kind of all together. You don't have to like think about it that much. Um, I mean, you have to think about it, but you don't have to think about the mechanics of it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Tony had a, a great comment in there, right? Like. Yeah. One of the big issues, like the reason why workflows is awesome is because it like helps you prevent leakage, right? So instead of like accidentally doing a transformation on the entire data set, well, now it breaks it up in a way that like it prevents that. Or um, like there's probably a billion cases where, hey, the same transformations like PCA and everything else that you did on your training data set if you don't do those same types of transformations within that training data set, as new predictions come in, um, that will that will give you some wacky predictions as well, um, which is you know some pain that I've experienced a lot in the past. <laughs> so I think an example of what you guys were just talking about is I'm going to try to run this recipe with this uh, step log and it's, it's not going to like it, essentially. And it should produce a, oh. when mm -hmm. I try to fit it, it should produce a, what did I do? Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. It should produce an any value. Uh, yeah, you if I if I run it in order, but you you can add you need to uh, rerun uh, LM workflow probably. I just did yeah. So yeah, for instance, I ran this this log transform on popularity, which has a zero in it, and that's going to produce some NA values. So right, yeah. So I'm interested to hear what, what best practices are for this because I think that there is a, I see an offset function there. Is there some kind of padding you can do in the step log function where you can essentially add 0 0.001 to something and, and so you don't have an error there? What's, what's the best practice between padding it just a little bit or, or doing a different kind of transformation? I think I think, I think I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Ever I, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think I've seen people do offset equals one, but mm -hmm. I don't know what the, underlying theory behind that is? I mean, if functionally, it's, you know, you can take the log of one, but not the log of zero. I, I don't really know the, the theory behind it either. I think the idea is that the relationship stays similar. So you add one to everything and then you do the log, which will like prevent the zero from creating a problem. So if you just add, Ben, if you just add offset equals one there, it should let you run that, and then run the next chunks. So that is something you said there, Tan. I'm only going to call you out because we're friends. Jeez, <laughs> appreciate it. Um, <laughs> right, the, like the definition of a log is that one would mean a lot more to something that's lower than, than higher, right? And so can you use a flat offset if, you know, it would mean a lot more for something with popularity zero than for something with popularity a hundred. I, I think in this case, like um, you're doing uh, like a strict linear transformation, right? You're just adding, like it doesn't change the relationship between any of those values. It's just, you literally can't take a log value of zero. Um, I don't know if someone has like more I don't know, I guess, 
math knowledge than me would be great. I was about you use it with uh, insurance costs, you're saying. Do you use step like offset equals one as well? Or like zero zero point zero one? Like does that make it like is that something you consider? I guess the, the, the question is, is it, if it uh, adds it, if it adds one to it before, or does it just make it the, the results of the log one? Like, is it, is one the, the, the preprocessor or is that added afterwards? Because that would change the, 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 the relationship, I guess. It's a good question. Well, when you reverse transform it, uh, it just does the opposite uh, processes, right? It, it'll take uh, the exponent and then subtract one. Um, so I think, uh, well, yeah, there's other options for, uh, depending on your data. I've definitely seen the log plus one transform. I, I think there's a name for it. I'm trying to Google for it and I, I'm failing a little right now, but I think what was said earlier about it keeping the same uh, mathematical properties of, you know, uh, the same order in the data set. Um, I think that's important. Um, but you, the predict function will know to, well, I think it does, uh, at least with the tidy models, will it um, inverse the log and subtract the one for you? Um, if you're not using tidy models, I don't think it, it, it would do that, but I think it, it might with tidy models. It might just be something like you need to know the data a little bit as well, because like if the range is quite a lot, then like bumping from zero to one and then like the other end of that being like, you know, 1000 or whatever, um, that relationship might change. But if it's like zero to 10, it might not matter as much, you know, like the scale of the data kind of makes a difference too, I would guess. I think that's a good point. I would actually think adding one from zero to 10 would matter, would matter more than like the higher way. But that's just, because that doesn't really change much when you're dealing with like bigger values, like in a, like on a change. scale from like zero to a hundred thousand versus like zero to 10, like the difference changed between, or by adding that one, there's no dis difference in the, in the distance, but. Um. Maybe not that, sorry, I think what I was trying to, th I was trying to, was thinking about was more like, if there's a lot of zeros or, and then like, you know, like the distribution of the data, I think might have an impact on that as well, maybe. Not sure, I'm just guessing really, but, um, you know, if there's a lot of numbers like outside of that zero and like the zero is just like one outlier, it might make a difference. So um, one question I had that I was hoping that I could get some discussion on was how workflows <clears throat> inherit formulas. Um, I've seen some videos from Julia Sogi and other people where they just feed the formula from the recipe and it looks like the workflow inherits it from the recipe, but it also looks like you can, you can like in here or he, assigned it manually, or you could do update formula, I think. So is there a best practice for that? I, I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure I have much insight to add, but I usually try to mimic Julia. <laughs> so this does look a little bit different to me after, after kind of following Julia's template. I think that's that I think I've seen that if like there's no process, like there's no recipe steps, they'll go immediately to the workflow and just have the formula there. That's from what I've seen. So do you need a step where you add a model or can you just go with the formula if the formula is a linear regression or whatever? Do you actually need to define a model? 
you do so the formula isn't enough to tell it how to solve it um and so you need to tell it you know what engine are you going to use um exact like this formula might apply to more than one type of model so tell it what type of model it is um so you do need that um to to make it specific of what you're doing and then i would say the other thing is um like the way he shows this is kind of backwards from how i usually think because i think about the recipe as the first thing you do and then you model so just I usually add the formula in the recipe because that's kind of logically the first step to me. Um, but it does. The only time you have to add it in the model specification is when it's the weird formulas, uh, the special cases that he talked about. Otherwise, um, yeah. <laughs> and how is is it Yao Johnson, Tyler? Do you know? How it's pronounced? I'm not, I don't know that I've ever actually heard it pronounced out loud. That Yao Johnson is the um, generalization of log for the plus one, <laughs> and the chat says, "Yeah, maybe." Yeah, it, <laughs> how it's it was, pronounced. <laughs> it, it was developed specifically to deal with this situation where where you've got some zeros. Right. I was intrigued in the book in this chapter. They, um, he's got a way to do survival, um, which is mind blowing for me in the formula. Yeah, I like um, like sorting, reading through this chapter and kind of obsessively looking at other things because it has that section about like future plans. And I went and looked at, well, okay, because they have this whole thing where they will have a, a package that they're working on privately within the tidy models team, and then it'll become public and then it will go to CRAN. Um, sometimes he'll talk about it in a talk before it goes public. So there's all this stuff. And I was like, so what are these things? And like that one that I brought up in the channel, um, probably it's a little tiny package. It only does a couple of the post-processing steps, but it does exist and it's on CRAN. Um, it was fun, I guess, is what I'm saying. This this channel had lots, or this channel, this uh, chapter had lots of intriguing bits, um, interesting ways to work with it. I it was he had talked about workflows coming before it was public, before he had like actually opened up the repo, and I actually set up a thing that every hour or something was checking if the GitHub repo returned to 404 or not, and it was set up to beep when it didn't because this workflows package just ties everything together, makes tidy models so much more sensible to work with, in my opinion. Actually, no, it was Tune. It was before, I think it was before workflows came out when Tune was uh, uh, coming out, whatever, that which Tune is coming up in a future chapter. Yeah, both of them were uh, game changers for sure. Yeah. Like before, there's like recipes and parsnip, and you're like, okay, I can kind of see it and try to use broom at the end, but definitely right. having those other two. Yeah. So workflows have a lot more features than, than kind of what, what he got into here in this chapter. Do you know, like, things like finalizing a workflow, is that going to come with a different chapter or, or things like? I know there are a lot of functions where you can pull things out of a workflow. I think I would have liked to see some of that. He showed some of the pull. He showed yeah. the idea of the pull. Um, I suspect we will, I don't know, I haven't dug into it, but I think this chapter is probably going to come back up. Um, I did ask and he specifically said, I don't remember the number, but there are a number of chapters that don't exist yet that we uh, very possibly are going to get ahead of them um, and have to go like read the feature engineering book while they finish the book or something. Um, oops. So 
I guess I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't looked far enough ahead to know if workflows comes back around. Um, but probably. Yeah, I mean, in in the book, he goes over how you can pull out the, the recipe uh, or the or the fit, like he's showing on the screen now. Yeah, um, and then you can pull those into in a broom and, and make your graphs there for like variable importance and whatnot. Um, I know I tried to I tried to do that with baguette recently, and it wasn't quite there. I had to look. <laughs> I, had to, I had to I had to do look into the structure and find um, which object. In the list actually held the the, the uh, VI scores, um, but I think for, for most models it's it's already there. So it looks like uh, the the main driver of workflows is the attributes again. Seems like that's a common theme in tiny models. Like it's an object that contains everything. So like you can update that object again later. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what you're getting at? Yeah, well, and if you do the SCR function on these, like they have one or two or, or maybe three um, attributes. So I'm wondering if that's how they manage all those, like, yeah, if you update the recipe, update the workflow, things like that. Yeah, there's... Um... The tidy models team definitely takes uh, extreme advantage of uh, S3 objects and, you know, dealing with uh, having classes and, and uh, methods on all of these, you know, like tidy does a billion things depending on what type of object you feed to it. Um, so, yes. <laughs> So if I were to just update this recipe or update this uh, formula, would I do something like, I can't type. And then update formula. And then enter the new formula, right? Yeah, if you like yeah. throw throw in a simplified model, it should. should I don't know if that's good. Okay. I'm not even sure you have to rename it, right? If you if you just pipe to the old workflow, I think it'll update the the existing one. I could be wrong. Yeah. But... yeah. It should. So once it updates, you can't get that original formula back. Is that how that works? Yeah, it would overwrite the formula yeah. that's stored in the object. So yeah. you're only looking at those ones, for example. Yeah, so let's let's do a quick uh, subset selection. So can, I don't think you need the, the arrow there. I don't think you need the assign function. Oh, you, if you can just pipe it? I think you can just pipe it. I mean, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, yeah, if you just pipe it, it won't save it anywhere, but we can oh, see, the, I see. see how it's working. Yep. Or it I guess not naturally one, modify in place. Yeah. It right. won't assign it anywhere, I guess, is the more correct way to say that. Thank you. But interestingly, um, you know, if you look at LM. W flow before you reassign it. I think it has the fit in it, right? Whereas after you do the update formula, it removes the fit because you've updated the formula. So the fit's not valid anymore. Oh, okay. So then you would have to go and fit again. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, uh, as Jordan pointed out in the chat, there's the I don't know the name for that. The assignment pipe, whatever. I I always retype. I never use the assignment pipe, and I think it's ninety percent because I don't have a hotkey set for it. <laughs> oh. 
I like just being more explicit than having the uh, the assignment, I, even though it is convenient, I suppose. Wait, so what do you, you guys don't use the assignment pipe? So yeah, the assignment pipe meaning where you do the assignment arrow and the pipe in one one function, the double headed pipe. Oh, so so the assignment pipe is like the normal pipe, except instead of just the one V, this is probably the wrong way for you, but the, <laughs> instead of the one V, it's going the other way. So you get rid the, of that. yeah. that's the assignment operator. That's, yeah, that's the uh, whatever double assignment. Oh, Look so, at the chat. so, if you, so can... you don't want that, but if you go to like, um, no, it's so that's something the right like, assign. Something like anyway. That. I'll look at the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of mores. Oh, man, I completely miss this. That's okay. That's okay. We point out the ones that are important. And okay. then you can yeah, read it the next day. Raise it. But the assignment pipe is like a normal pipe. You know how it's like um, percent, arrow, percent. But mm -hmm. instead of percent, arrow, percent, it's percent arrows in like opposite directions and then percent again less than greater yes. than <laughs> yes thank you that's the word <laughs> I, can't yeah, do, I, can, I, I can't do things okay um so yeah instead of saying lmw flow gets lmw flow pipe update formula you can just do lmw flow le less than greater. that yeah. yeah and it does the assignment and the pipe at the same time um it's never been something that I've gotten in the habit of using because I think it's a little confusing and it's harder to see, oh, right, I actually assigned that. Um, but I can imagine there are cases where uh, it's better. And I, I wanted to say uh, to to Connor's comment about long specific functions are better than bake and juice, in my opinion, I agree. And one thing I like, I mean, it's not specific, but I, a thing I like about um, workflows is that um, you don't have to bake and prep and juice because the workflow actually does those steps. And so you just fit and that includes like bake or prep rather, or you, uh, you predict and that'll include the bake. And so you don't have to remember those weird functions that have weird names in recipes. It just, it wraps it all up into one step. Now I want to see Max is replying on the Slack right now. So has he said anything useful for the meeting? Hey, back to the log zero thing. I threw a whole bunch of text in the chat there this is, I knew there was another method I had seen that handles it by splitting it into two variables, one being an indicator for, you know, hey, is there a zero here or not? And depending which is the case, whether it applies the, the log or not, this is, this is what I recall as kind of one of the better ways to do it. I just hadn't done it in a while. And gave you a reference there. So back to John's point while we're digesting this log zero thing again. Um, can we go through like what you would need to do if you were doing this without workflows and then do it again with workflows? So like you said something about like not needing to bake and then um, just calling the predict on it. Is that, that's the main goal of workflows, right? Yeah. Is to like, be able to just call predict. Afterwards. Basically, yeah, it's to combine it all into kind of, so you can't screw it up or it's harder to screw it up that you're taking your training data, your raw training data and going all the way to a fit model. And then you take your raw testing data or your raw new data and going all the way to predictions without having, you know, it's wrapping all those steps up that all the data 
transformation, all the whatever feature engineering, um, and either the fit or the predict are all combined. And I like I say a thing I like about that is I really don't like the names of the functions and recipes, so it's nice to get rid of bacon prep in my mind. <laughs> Can you set up resampling in a workflow? Um, I don't know. I, I believe the workflow is outside of that, though, right? No, not necessarily, but it might currently be. Um, Usually before the fit. Yes. I'm scrolling through chapter 10. Right? Yeah, me to too. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be in the workflow. Scanning, scanning. So in, in my code, I'm looking at something I've written now. I don't know if it's right, but I've got my workflow and I pipe into fit underscore free samples. Where it has the, the resamples and your yep, control. Yep. yep. So that, there we that go. to me tells me that it's outside of the workflow. Um, so far, it is outside. And I, it's been a while since I've actually um, done any. So, and I haven't, we haven't gotten to chapter 10 to see. Man, it feels like it could be in the workflow, but I don't know if it is yet. So just a question, like I'm seeing on in chapter 10, it does something like um, workflow and then like the pipe and then fit resamples. So what's like the difference between that and I guess piping to like add model and you're saying if it's like in or outside the workflow. So, so I think, and like the way that I, I look at it is that workflow is meant to be kind of like maybe not data agnostic, but it's supposed to have like, you should be able to take it and put it on any piece of data, right? So you set up this kind of generalized workflow, kind of specific towards your data because you're adding a formula or you know what kind of kind of data is in there. But when you start doing like the resamples and stuff, like you need to take that workflow and apply it to each one of the, like in this case, it's like each one of the cross folds separately, right? right? Whereas like the moment you start incorporating that workflow, I don't know if it breaks like some philosophical point they <laughs> have. Um, I, I, I think it makes sense to me, but I, I don't, maybe it's just because like, I've yeah. read it this way or something. I don't know. Um, I I don't I want to hold off. I don't kn for sure know the answer to this, and let's kind of watch for it as we get into these upcoming chapters where we actually talk about resampling. Um, skimming through resampling is outside, but I don't know that it has to be, and I don't I can't just can't answer that yet my head I can't wrap my head around it and yeah uh, asthma should just totally be able to answer this already right <laughs> I mean I've always seen the resampling stuff um, like with the tuning dials um, I, I don't know if that's considered outside of work I mean I guess it's not technically part of workflows or functional getting a I mean, chapter 12 I was going to say, part of the reason that um, I really wanted this book club is I don't feel like I do it all right yet. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> I feel like around, you know, by the time we finish the chapters that um, don't exist yet, we'll have a really solid answer, answer to this. <laughs> By the way, finalize is in chapter 12.
to whoever was asking that. I don't remember who. <laughs> and that's as far as I'm going, trying to look into the future to answer this question. So I haven't had a chance to watch um, last week's yet. Uh, do we do we have someone for next week yet? Sounds like you're volunteering. Oh heck no! <laughs> I've got like thirty five videos to process and upload to our YouTube channel. I don't have time to prep a chapter yet. So you're more informed than the rest of us. <laughs> Uh, what is, so it's, oh, uh, it's what, Yardstick, I guess? It's basically the Yardstick chapter. <sighs> I mean, if no one else wants to do it, I will do it, but I I'll, don't really want to do it. I'll do it, Joe. <laughs> All right. Who, who just said that? Joe. All right. There you are. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to give you much of a choice anyway. Well, no. <laughs> I'll be upset if we don't have uh, music at the beginning next week. I don't I'll call you out. Music, but I'll find some. I assume you are Joe Sid on the, the Slack? Yes. All right. <laughs> there. That's my. Right. Are we getting Rickrolled? Uh, R roll? Is it R? The R song, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone should listen to this song. Oh dear. I was I was thinking Wait, uh, that's the wrong R song. What are, what is song. What are you doing? I don't know what this blasphemy is and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better R song. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I have headphones so I can't like play it for everybody very easily, but we will we'll listen to the R song at the next uh the next meetup. I just feel like we need to we need to get hyped up at the beginning, you know. It's just like yeah, oh. it is it is a song to get hyped up by for sure. All right, so all right, Joe will go next week. Um, I'll try to actually have learning objectives before the day of the meeting, so that'll be good. Um, I'm getting fancy got two level learning objectives now. So now I'm gonna have to go back and redo all the old learning objectives, so. Um, cool, anything else? Anyone? All right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, thanks ben. ben. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. All right, see thank everybody next week. Listening. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> thank Bye. you.